You know, President Obama proposed this budget this week. It includes a $175 million cut to the Environmental Protection Agency. It is the third consecutive year that he's cut funds for the EPA. He did, however, pose a, propose a $66 million increase in spending for air quality programs and renewed his commitment to reduce greenhouse gases, believed to be the main culprit for global warming. Last week, Climate Watch senior editor Craig Miller caught up with the original head of the EPA to talk about the agency's top priorities. It's not every day you see a federal official hop astride a motorcycle at a press conference, unless, of course, it's an electric motorcycle. And the photo op is at a California company seen as poster child for renewable energy and green jobs. This clean energy initiative is just one of many priorities Jared Blumenfeld juggles as administrator of the San Francisco-based Pacific Southwest region of the Environmental Protection Agency. Your boss, uh, Lisa Jackson, the top administrator at EPA, mm -hmm. was in town just recently. The two of you were touring a company uh, that makes components for electric vehicles and talking about green jobs. Mm -hmm. uh, this seems to be kind of part of a full court press since the State of the Union message uh, to get out there and show that the EPA is a jobs generating machine as well as uh, one that protects the environment. Is that just come with the territory now? Where we are as a nation right now is at a time where we need jobs desperately um, and we see the economy is growing slowly, but also a time where we need environmental protection and so those two things do naturally come together and the Bay Area, California, the West generally is a great place to be able to point to businesses like Mission Motors and you can say they've gone from 40 employees today to 80 employees tomorrow as a result of standards that the EPA has come out with that require engines to be cleaner. If you're an innovative company that's really thinking about how to do things differently to make money for your shareholders, to make your employees uh, successful, and at the same time promote environmental values, we want to help you do that. And I mentioned the State of the Union address in which the president used the word climate only one time, mm -hmm. um, and it was only in the context of saying, probably not going to see any legislation on it, uh, or kind of a reality check. Last year, didn't use the word at all in the State of the Union mm -hmm. message. Uh, now contrast to this building where I see posters all over the place with a list of your priorities, of EPA priorities, and the first one on the list is taking action on climate change. So how can you reconcile those two things? Amazingly, despite the political climate that we find ourselves in, a huge amount has been done to combat climate change. So EPA, at first of the instruction of our Supreme Court in 2007, they said, EPA, you need to look at whether greenhouse gas emissions need to be regulated. We did that in 2009. We came out with an endangerment finding saying that greenhouse gases are an endangerment to public health and the environment and that vehicles contribute to greenhouse gas emissions. We then came out with the largest 13 auto manufacturers and came out with rules that will save literally billions of barrels of oil um, from needing to be imported. Those rules are now being updated so that by 2025 we'll require every passenger vehicle get to 54.5 miles to the gallon, so a significant leap forward. Now most of those initiatives you mentioned are national uh, on uh -huh. uh, EPA initiatives. How can you, working from your lonely outpost here, uh, in charge of one region uh, mm -hmm. of EPA, how can you try to affect change, real change and progress on the climate front? Again, you know, when, when the national environment is so difficult and when you're, you, you've only got one piece of the puzzle here. So we have a unique region. Um, it stretches from Guam and American Samoa, Hawaii, California, Nevada, and Arizona. So all those things, all those places share abundant sunshine. Uh, renewable energy has been a big focus of ours in this office. So something the EPA does is we clean up Superfund sites. We clean up sites that are uh, contaminated. We're doing a map at the moment with the Department of Energy to overlay all those disturbed lands and grid interconnections so that we can prioritize putting solar really quickly without very much permitting um, on those sites. So that's 
one thing that we're doing. One of the things you can do regionally mm -hmm. uh, to, try to, to try to move the climate agenda, uh, I guess, is to encourage localities, communities, to engage in this smart growth concept. Uh, how's that working? EPA has been a champion of smart growth from the beginning and really working with communities at the community local level to say, how do you design a place like San Francisco, which is very dense, it's walkable, it's got public transportation, you don't need to own a car, you can bicycle around, and that reduces greenhouse gas emissions a great deal. Um, there's also other smart design features, green infrastructure, so things like low impact development. So rather than having water go through a wastewater treatment system, it percolates through the cement, through the soil, back out into the bay. So thinking about smarter ways of designing cities and communities that more mimic natural systems and also allow people to get out of their car um, is something that we need to continue pushing because if you look at the real estate market uh, over the last three years, it's actually fascinating. Smart growth has really been fairly uh, robust in an economy where the sprawl is now in foreclosure. But EPA's biggest challenge really, I think, even around the country is how we get the San Joaquin Valley and the LA Basin into attainment of the Clean Air Act for both ozone and fine, very fine particulate matter actually finer than a human hair, but it has very serious respiratory and, uh, and other consequences. The biggest issue really with climate change is people don't understand how it fits into their daily lives. So one of the opportunities that we have here in California with the non-attainment of the Clean Air Act is to show people that by getting rid of an old diesel locomotive, by getting rid of an old diesel truck or tractor and replacing it with a cleaner technology, we help the environment, uh, we help get into attainment. Um, and we help them save money. Jared, thanks for the time. Thank you.